you much. So we all know that Christmas is a time of year for giving and kindness. Yeah, but if you're thinking about maybe bringing an animal home for the holidays, well, you may want to tap the brakes and do just a little more homework first. Let's go now to the VCA Animal Hospital and Emergency Center where Sunrise reporter Roland Rodriguez is this morning. And Roland, talk to us about what the concerns are here. All right, good morning, guys, and good morning, Sound Text. Now, keep in mind, a pet is not something you take home, try out, then return it if it doesn't suit you. Because it's, it's a, think about it, it's a commitment. With the festive season upon us, people are searching for that perfect gift. For many, the comfort and joy of a pet may seem like a great option, but it could be a mistake. Can we see those mistakes uh, here in the hospital pretty frequently where puppies are adopted or purchased uh, from a, a breeder and the puppy uh, is sick uh, or has parasites or sometimes it's not even a purebred puppy, even though that's what they've paid for. If a breeder does not introduce you to the puppy's mom and dad, or will not allow you to see the facility where the puppies were raised, then that is a big red flag. Um, where you get your puppy is really, really important. And I strongly uh, uh, encourage everyone to uh, try to find a puppy suitable for their family at one of the local shelters. There are lots of puppies that need homes. If you do get a pet, make sure to talk with your veterinarian to find out how best to protect your pet from diseases like canine parvovirus. So the, the things that you watch for in puppies, um, you know, make sure they don't have runny noses, coughs, uh, look under their tail, make sure there's no evidence of diarrhea um, and, um, and the puppy should feel good and be playful. And if it's lethargic uh, or not playful or just wants to lie around, uh, I would be concerned about that. Also keep in mind during the holidays to keep people food away from pets. It's tempting to give your pets anything they want, even if it's not good for them. And I will tell you, um, we work at an emergency clinic here and every day after Thanksgiving, day after Christmas, day after New Year's, we treat lots and lots of vomiting and diarrhea, and that can be avoided. Again, if you're thinking about getting a pet over the holidays, make sure you do your research, not only on the pet itself, but also the breeder before you make that purchase. Mike? All right, thank you, Roland. Hey, this week we have begun a series here that we're calling the 12 Scams of Christmas. Number three on the list are those secret Santa and secret sister exchanges. Now, it's a scheme to get more presents, and this year, well, it comes with a new twist. You may have seen this online or even in a text. If you send someone a gift, you could receive 36 in exchange. Works like a chain letter, but it's really a pyramid scheme. Plus, many people report never receiving their gifts. And something new that we're seeing this year, a secret sister version where participants mail each other bottles of wine. It's not legal to send wine or ship wine in all states, so you could be violating, you know, a state law somewhere. Uh, but most importantly, the U.S. Postal Service wants to let us know that this is considered a multi-level marketing scheme. Okay, so we really haven't heard of anyone being fined for this exchange, but... Pyramid schemes typically do carry penalties that can include fines, lawsuits, even jail time. So if you get one of these invitations, either ignore it or report it to the U.S. Postal Inspection Services. Good to know. Thanks a lot, Mike. Meanwhile, record online spending for the holidays means a record number of deliveries getting shipped to consumers' doorsteps. And that's also a prime opportunity for thieves. Liz McLaughlin goes over some simple ways to protect your packages. Hey, 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 get away. Keep an eye on porch pirates and stoop surfers with low-cost Wi-Fi surveillance, such as Google's Nest and Amazon's Ring devices, which can give real-time alerts for package deliveries. If you have a neighbor who uh, would you know, be kind enough to pick up the package for you, or you could just keep an eye on that package, that'll give you that peace of mind. But that doesn't always deter criminals. And even those caught on camera aren't always caught by police. 
And we take this crime really seriously. It's a felony. Police across the country are striking back, setting up sting operations with bait packages. Where is this item? And encouraging customers to use alternative delivery methods. Yeah, I ordered online and it was easier to have it shipped here to the store than it was to my house. Big box retailers are beefing up in-store pickup options, driving more traffic to stores such as Walmart and Target. We expect BOPIS, buy online, pick up in store, to be a really strong performer this year. It's already grown 43% over last year. There are also devices such as box lock to protect packages or get Amazon orders delivered to Amazon lockers in more than 900 cities. These are safe and secure locker locations where customers could choose to deliver their items and pick them up at no cost. Making sure thieves don't get their paws on your holiday gifts. Liz McLaughlin, NBC News. And, you know, that's one of the really sad things about the holidays is there's so many people willing to give, but there's just as many people willing yeah. to take. That's Unfortunately, yeah. I had a, a yeah. lady, I picked up a, a package from my front porch one time and was walking across my front lawn around to the garage. And the lady saw me and stopped and started taking pictures. And she <laughs> yells, thief, thief. No, she really yelled, yes. thief. And I, I uh, couldn't convince her. I didn't know I live here. This yeah, is mine. This well, is my house. at least you know she's watching. At that's least. Right. You, so. you got observant neighbors there. <laughs> You thief. <laughs> anyway, we are, of course, getting close to the holidays, folks. A lot of people already planning what they're going to do, where they're going to go. Uh, weather uh, for today is going to be a little bit milder. Obviously, yesterday was cold and wet all day. Right now, we're looking at about 49 degrees at, out at the island. This is at Waves Resort. And so uh, 49 on the island and about 45 in the city. Uh, there's your current temperature out at the airport, 44 actually. Uh, we've got no significant wind out there and that makes a big difference. Yesterday, probably if you were out, it was pretty cold because that wind was blowing at 20 miles an hour. Well, less than 10 is going to be fairly comfortable. In fact, today is the beginning of the warming trend. Yes, yesterday we were at 42 in the morning, 51 in the afternoon. And today we're going to be up to about 66, so we do have a warming trend. In fact, by the, by the weekend, we may be at the beach. You, you may consider getting the boat out and get out there on Saturday uh, before, because it's going to be very mild. And the question is, of course, the wind. Wind out of the uh, north is cold. Wind out of the south is warm because it comes over the Gulf waters, which are still running at about 64, 65 degrees. There you see the cloud cover that's over us this morning. It's going to be patchy, uh, so it's going to be partly cloudy today, but with warming temperatures. We also have this band of clouds coming in in North Texas. Those are both combined to give us a little bit of cloud cover, but Tomorrow, we get drier air and we're looking at even warmer temperatures, running around 44 for us, 34 in the Austin area, 42 up in Houston at this hour. Here you see the cloud deck that's going to be sort of wandering around today and then tonight. You see it right about there coming in. That's a, a, a small area of low pressure that's not really producing any precipitation. But we take a look at the big picture because this is the old front that brought us the cold weather. Now we've got uh, this little area of low pressure coming in with that cloud cover. But we look upstream. Yes, there's the next big storm. It's another one of those huge Pacific storms that's going to slam into the western states. A lot of rain. We're talking, you know, these are almost hurricane force storms. I mean, they're probably looking at 70 mile an hour winds slamming into Oregon and Washington state. Now, right now across the country, we can complain all we want, but we're at 44. Miami is at 73 right now okay and sunrise in miami at 73 we're 44 it's already cold but it could be worse we're looking at chicago this morning at 22. so here's the cloud deck that's going to be drifting overhead here's the low pressure causing it by tomorrow we get a northerly wind behind it and then for the surface we start picking up that south wind now that's on saturday that's when the wind starts to get a little bit stronger by sunday it's going to be very strong uh, not a great uh, boating day. I mean, the rough will, the Laguna will be a, a little bit choppier because of the 25 mile an hour winds. But that's in advance of the next big storm. The next big storm arrives here on Monday. So we've got a little bit of a roller coaster here on temperatures. 51 yesterday, right? Today, 66. Tomorrow, 76. Then 82 on Sunday. That's the warmest day. Then Monday, this is the next front. And next week, we chill back down to the overnight lows in the 30s and daytimes in the 60s. That is your seven-day forecast brought to you by NEC Co-op Energy. We'll be right back with more on Sunrise coming up right after this.
Chris 6 News Sunrise continues. Welcome back. Well, the holiday season is always a great time to spend with family. And there's one young lady on the Texas A&M Corpus Christi women's basketball team who will be spending the upcoming holiday season with her new family. Jeff Dubrop has that story for us this morning. Emma Young has grown into a senior leader for the Islanders women's basketball team. But long before that, she was just a high school student in desperate need of guidance. Uh, my mom wasn't very good. Like, it wasn't a very, I mean, I'm not, she tried her best. Bouncing from home to home and school to school in her home state of Kentucky, the outlook seemed bleak. That is until she met teacher and high school basketball coach Jacqueline Coleman. She was new to our school, so I did not know who she was. Um, and through that uh, coach player relationship, um, certainly evolved much more into family. After four close years together, they're taking the next big step adoption. It was a relationship that. I think most people saw on the court, um, but certainly it it um, blossomed behind the scenes. If I wouldn't have met them, I don't. I have no idea where I would be, and I don't want to think about where I'd be. I mean, it's been a, the world to me, obviously. It's been a busy month of December. Emma is leading the Islanders women's basketball team, hoping for a very successful season. And Jacqueline was just sworn in as Kentucky's lieutenant governor on December 10th. But both know perhaps the biggest day of their lives will come on December 22nd when the paperwork is finalized and Jacqueline is officially named Emma's mom. Jeff Dubroff, Chris 6 News. Happening now, police are actively investigating a gas station robbery. Now, police got this call around 1.40 this morning from a CEFCO in Waco that you're seeing right now. Police say the suspects were wearing ski masks and that one was carrying a gun. The suspects went into the gas station and took money from the cash register and also took a safe. The suspects ran away from the scene with the money. And at this point, we do not know how many suspects are involved. That's what's happening right now in Waco. Sonia, back to you. Thanks a lot, Shelby. Later today, Texas A&M Corpus Christi will celebrate a new downtown property. Chris Dix News anchor Katia Auriante has the details. History in the making today. Good morning, everyone. Buenos dias. The Island University is expanding once again to downtown. Today, the president of the university, along with downtown management officials, are going to have a ceremonial signing of some paperwork to celebrate the Island University's expansion to 223 Chaparral Street. Now, this is the school's second permanent downtown building, and it's going to offer the university the ability to more easily connect and interact with people and businesses in the heart of downtown, helping both the school and bringing more to the downtown downtown area. Have a great morning, everyone. We're going to see you tonight for Chris 6 News at 5, 6 and 10. A new faith based organization called Mercy Seat Ministries is holding a ribbon cutting tonight on the island. Now they're asking for donations for underprivileged children. That includes items for hygiene as well as non perishable foods, clothing and school supplies. Mercy Seat has adopted a CCISD middle school and all of the items will be given to them before Christmas. We're trying to fill in those gaps. There are so many needs that we notice that students have. I have students that come in with shorts year round because they don't own a pair of pants. Mercy Seat Ministries will have their ribbon cutting and donation drive tonight at Island Italian Restaurant beginning at 5 o'clock. Well, today just so happens to be a very special day for Mexican Catholics. It is the feast day of Our Lady of Guadalupe. <laughs> A pre-celebration was held just last night over at the Holy Family Church on Nogales. The event stems from the belief that a man encountered the Virgin Mary, Mexico's patron saint, in Mexico City on December 9th and 12th. If you missed out, don't worry. There's going to be a procession held later today from the Sacred Heart Church on Comanche to the Corpus Christi Cathedral, which will wrap up with a special mass. And if you want to check it out, it all gets started at 5.30. If you've never seen that, you probably ought to go by and check it out. It's uh, pretty cool. It's a very big day in yeah. Latin America, Our Lady of Guadalupe, and, and it's almost a national holiday in Mexico. So mm -hmm. I got another one for you. That, that's on the religious side. On the really right. silly side, who was born today known as Old Blue Eyes? Uh, that'd be Frank Sinatra. That's right. Yeah. And it's his birthday, 1915. Really? And you know what town he was born in, I bet. I don't, as a matter of fact. It was a joke forever. Uh, Hoboken, New Hoboken, Jersey. That's right, Hoboken. Yes, <laughs> Everybody, I forgot about that. That was a joke forever. Uh -huh. Anyway, so we got you covered on both on this, on the sac sacred and on the religious side right here on Sunrise. How about that? We're looking at traffic brought to you this morning by Sames Ford. Uh, we've got 
Fairly quiet weather out there. There's no wind. Temperatures are on the cool side, down to 49. But the fact that we don't have a wind problem today is going to help out. Here's our live picture in B. You can see uh, cars moving along very nicely. And as we go into the Rockport area, yeah, just a little bit of sunrise there. But you can see how we're going to have some partly cloudy skies out there today. Shouldn't get up to about 66. And we'll be talking about how much warmer it'll be over the weekend coming up in just a moment. Hola, Sambo. Mic check, mic check, mic check. I love like, all the black and white, all the old stuff.